Building the perfect swarm. I didn't upload the video in the last two days because I was mainly thinking about how can I build the ideal formation that will allow me to stay agile and adapt to the speed of uh, the agent technology being improved but still be able to build things that are meaningful and not just uh, cool for showing off in YouTube videos. And a few days ago, I uploaded a video, which probably you, most of you guys saw, I don't know if most of you, but some of you saw, in which we've utilized the agent builder to select agents from a big pool of agents that, that are specific for the task. But I thought about it that before I step into building, whether it's with Autogen or Crew AI, I probably need to zoom out for a second and try to figure out what is the ideal formation. So today is going to be slightly more technical or more theory because I want to make sure, I wouldn't say that we get this right, but I'm thinking this through um, because as you saw in my QAI video a few days ago, planning the swarm or, or the crew or the, the agent group in different formation has different implications and different derivatives. So I had a video in which I compared um, asking three different crews from QAI to build email templates versus one crew to build a similar email template versus one crew with delegation abilities and only one boss and one human input and each one of them create a different output. So this got me thinking of, okay, I need to study this a bit. And it got me thinking about my days as an industrial engineer when I was studying and how it actually blew my mind to learn about the different types of processes and different types of formation of company formations and and in which formation each one, in which action or each goal, each formation is different. So I decided to research this a bit. So I looked up in Google Scholar and I wanted to compare different organizational structures and get a better understanding which structure is best for our use case, which is using agents and when dealing with human beings uh, in an organization, you have to take care of uh, their well-being, of their motivation, of their performance. So there are many parameters that you need to optimize and you, you plan and you build the organization accordingly. But in our case, since we don't need to motivate the agents, we just optimize them for performance and we don't need them to have like managers who make sure that they are taking enough holiday and that the workers are, are happy at home and have like a good uh, work-life balance. So this is slightly different and the organizational structure is going to be slightly different. But before I, I try to optimize the organizational structure for agents, I wanted to see what's available out there with regards to, to these days, you know, when building organizational structures with human beings. So I looked up uh, in Google Scholar, and I've been reading a few articles about comparison of different um, organizational structures. And I wanted to share with you a few of my learnings on observations. Obviously, if you guys are not using Google Scholar, I highly recommend that you check it out because in opposing to JGPT, which, which sometimes hallucinates, or in opposing to Google, which sometimes just gives you um, the most popular BS, Google Scholar gives you, I mean, at least based on my observation, research-backed um, data, which can be, in my opinion, a bit more challenging to consume, but uh, it's more interesting because uh, at least I can believe these people, although there are many also flaws in the way that researchers are conducting research these days, especially uh, stuff that isn't scientific, but still, it was interesting. Uh, a few of my learnings. So, um, this was interesting. So, structural structural models. Structural models give the main importance to organizational structure 
but key elements are consistent with the main features of each formal model. The structural view is based on six hypotheses. First, the organization exists to achieve the predetermined goals. So let's say the agent swarm exists to achieve the predetermined goal. For each organization, structural form based on specific set of conditions is designed. Straightforward. Uh, an agent swarm is effective if the environment confusion and individual priorities are restricted by reasoning norms. So this is highly relevant for us when we are going to structure um, the agent swarm or the crew or the group for autogen. Specialization enables high level of, of specialization of special specialization and individual performance. So this is also interesting. I'm often thinking of how sh how deep should we go with the specialization of the agent? Because on one hand, if you give them a prompt and equip them with a, a knowledge base so they can be more specialized. But on the other hand, we have the downside of the fact that they don't, they can't remember the context uh, and the have a token limit and we also have a cost related limit or not limit but a constraint um, because we can't give all the agents we can build like thousand agents that are highly specialized because this will probably go wrong but later on today or in the next videos we are going to test this hypothesis and see what works best like uh, many agents that are specialized and a few managers or a flat hierarchy or stuff like this but we will cover this later on. Coordination and control are necessary for effectiveness. So this might to somewhat, uh, to some extent answer the question that I had regarding should we manage them or have this flat and organizational problems arise from unsuitable and, un and inefficient structures and can be solved by restructuring or development of new systems. Okay, interesting. Um, this was also an interesting abstract. To the extent an organizational structure is the outcome of an intentional and rational choice, such a choice is complex. A relevant aspect of such complexity is the number of different and usually conflicting criteria employed by the decision maker. In this case, it's us, how we build the swarm or how we build the crew or how we build the group. The application of traditional and pragmatic approaches implies the choice of one type of organizational structure through multiple assessing criteria. A multi-criteria choice is involved even in a purely scientific approach. Different organization theories suggest different criteria. The standard decision theory based on the maxim maxim maximization of some utility function cannot deal with the multi-criteria. The task can be fulfilled in a rigorous and formal way by outranking method, which are a branch of operation research. Okay, so basically what they are saying, and this relates to something that I've been saying uh, many times, many, many people believe that content, content is king, but in my be belief, context is king, and the world is complex, and there are many variables in each equation that we are trying to solve, so probably we don't have like a, a one-size-fits-all, and we won't probably be able to build a perfect swarm, that being said, if we approach the building of the swarms from a scientific perspective approach and try to outrank methods, this could be useful for us and this would be interesting. Now, the next thing that I did, um, I went to perplexity. Uh, I don't know, you, most of you probably know what is perplexity. Let me find this. Don't tell me that I closed. No, okay. So perplexity is also, it's kind of similar to ChatGPT, but what I like about uh, per perplexity is it more often, it doesn't hallucinate that often and also gives you uh, sources for um, the data and for the answers. So when I'm looking for something that is less creative and more um, facts driven, I use perplex perplexity. And my next step was just to get a better overview of what organizational structure exists. So uh, there are various types of organizational structures that exist, each with its own advantages and, and disadvantages. 
Some of the most common types are functional role-based structure. This structure has centralized leadership and clearly defined roles, job functions, chains of commands, and decision-making authority. It facilitates specialization, scalability, and efficiency. The next structure is product or market-based structure. This structure focuses on organizing employees according to the product or market they serve, allowing for better coordination and resource allocation with those areas. Geographical structure, this is irrelevant for us, so I skip this. Process-based structure, this structure organizes employees into groups or departments based on the steps of a process, with each step having a, super, a supervisor and employees who work in that process. Divisional structure, this structure organizes the company into separate divisions or business units, each with its own management and resources, allowing for better focus on specific business areas. I'm going to pause for a second to explain the rationale of why I'm, I'm reading this, because if it's not clear, we can build uh, our groups in different formations. So let's say I want to achieve building a SaaS or building a direct-to-consumer company. So I can either have like one group that is doing the whole thing from A to Z, or I can have multiple groups with... Uh, different goals and different drugs and different agent libraries that will do specific tasks. Or I can have one group divided into many groups that have different drugs. Or I can have um, many rags, many groups. So there are many ways to structure this if you want to accomplish big tasks. So this is why I want to cover uh, the differences. And in a moment, I will show you examples and pros and cons of each one of them. And then we can move forward to starting to test out and plan. We have the matrix structure, which this structure combines elements of functional and divisional structures with employees reporting to multiple manager, managers or departments based on their skills and products or markets they serve. We have the flat structure, which this structure has a more horizontal or flat, flat hierarchy with less hem emphasis on formal titles and more focus on collab and open communication. Um, and I won't cover this. And team-based, this structure co focuses on organization employees into teams with each team having a specific goal or objective, allowing for better collab and problem solving. So one team could be email writing. The other team could be uh, email proofreading. The other team can be email revising, assuming that we want to do a cold email campaign. Uh, if it's in a SaaS project, so one team can be the building, one team can be the planning, one team can be the QA team. Now, next, I ask it for I ask perplexity to give us examples uh, in the context of direct-to-consumer brand selling supplements. So, a functional role-based structure will be the direct-to-consumer brand may have functional departments such as marketing, sales, and product development, each with its own clear roles and responsibility. A product or market-based structure, the brand may more, may organize its teams according to different types of supplement it offers, such as vitamins, protein powders. Supplement, uh, herbal supplements, etc. A process base would be the brand may have distinct departments for product development, manufacturing, and distribution, each focusing on a specific test uh, step of the supply chain. Uh, let's say a flat structure. The brand may adopt a flat structure to encourage collaboration and open communication among the team, with less emphasis on formal hierarchy. The team-based is the brand may organize its, its workforce into cross-functional teams, each dedicated to a specific product line or market segment to encourage collaboration and innovation in developing and marketing supplements. Again, we can use these different structures and implement them when building the swarm. Next, I asked it to give me a pros and cons for each. So the pros and cons for the most relevant structures are a functional uh, slash role based so the pros are clear roles and responsibilities, efficient, efficient de decision making, and specialized expertise in specific areas. Cons limited communication and collaboration between departments, which may hinder innovation and problem solving. Um, now, communication isn't so crucial, necessarily so crucial in our case because these are agents, so they don't need um, like chit chatting or stuff like this, but still, communication isn't limited to chit chatting. But um, the fact is that some aspect that perplexity gave as pros and cons are not relevant 
for us in the context of agents because we are not hum- dealing with human beings. Now, product or market-based structure. So the pros are focusing on specific product lines or markets, allowing for better resource allocation and targeted marketing. It may lead to siloed teams and a lack of coordination across the organizations. Now, process-based. The pros are streamlined processes and workflows and better coordination among departments. The downside is it can be rigid and inflexible, making it difficult to adopt to, t- to t- changing market conditions or customer needs. Now let's skip to the team-based. So enhanced collaboration, innovation, and focus on specific product lines or markets. Uh, the cons, it can be complex to manage with multiple teams and reporting lines. Cool. Now I ask it, assuming all entities involved are robots, no feelings, no need to communicate, just follow order and are optimized for performance. Can you step-by-step analyze which structure would be ideal? Show me your reasoning. Okay. Assuming all entities involved are robots and do not require communication on emotional consideration, the ideal organization structure for a direct-to-consumer brand selling supplements would depend on the specific goals and requirements of the business, obviously. However, some general guidelines can be followed. Just let me take a sip. Functional role-based structure. This structure is beneficial in a robot-based environment as it allows for efficient specialization and coordination. Each robot can be programmed to perform a specific function such as product development, manufacturing, distribution, ensuring optimal performance and minimal errors. Product or market-based structure. In a product-based environment, a product-based structure may be more suitable. This allows each robot to focus on specific product lines or market segments, ensuring specialized expertise and tailored solutions for each product. Now let's skip to the team. In a robot-based environment, a team-based structure may not be necessary, as robots do not require collab or teamwork. Instead, the focus should be on optimizing the performance of each robot in an assigned task. Now. I asked it, do you offer ability to delegate to delegate tasks? What do you think about what do you think about specialized specializing? On a rate of one to ten, ten being most specialized, how would you suggest we build these robots? Highly specialized? Do you need more info for me in order to give advice? So we said delegating tasks is a vital aspect of effective management, even in a robot-based environment. It allows for an efficient allocation of resources and the development of specialized expertise. In the context of robot optimized for performance, delegating tasks can be highly beneficial as it allows each robot to focus on specific functions leading to increased efficiency and productivity. The level of specialization in building these robots can be rated as a 10, as each robot can be tailored to perform a highly specialized function leading to optimal performance in their designated tasks. Now, I, I said, let's assume that the more specialized the bot is, he's, he has no understanding of the context. How would you manage that? So we said, in a scenario where highly specialized robots lack an understanding of the context, it is essential to manage their functions strategically. Here are some approaches to address the challenge. Context management. Implement a system to manage and provide context to the robots for each task they perform. This can include a structured input format that explicitly defines the context for robot actions. So this makes me think that we must have um, a good uh, knowledge base for RAG and probably use um, the auto, auto, autogen new description uh, utility or ability or feature in which the group manager is able to easily select the relevant uh, agents. Repeating important information. So this is uh, regarding the system message. To enhance the robot context retention, repeat important information when necessary. This can be part of the input format to ensure that the critical details are reiterated for the robot to consider. Focus conversations. Keep the interactions with the robots focused and organized to help them retain and recall context more efficiently. This can be achieved by providing clear and concise instructions for each task. Clear and explicit instructions kind of similar system messages for context setting. Um, Now that was it pretty much with regards to suggestions from perplexity regarding how we need to structure this uh, swarm or or crew or group. 
Now, before we go on to the next step, I just wanted to share with you um, a very interesting document that I, I often refer to. And this is related to a flat organization, which we didn't cover so much in the examples. A uh, flat structure is the brand may adopt a flat, uh, flat structure to encourage collaboration and open communication among its teams. And one of the companies that is doing this uh, flat structure the best uh, these days is uh, Valve, Valve or Valve, I don't know how you pronounce the names, which is a gaming company. And they have um, a manifesto, a handbook that they give to all employees. And this is an awesome handbook. It's very interesting. And I highly recommend that you guys check it out. It basically, it gives them uh, instructions regarding how they should work in a flat company. So let me just show you a few, a few things. So one thing that I really loved is the fact that all desks in the companies have wheels. And they are saying, why does your desk have wheels? Think of those uh, wheels as a symbolic reminder that you should always be considering where you could move yourself to be more valuable. But also think of those wheels as literal wheels, because that's what they are for. And you'll be able to actually move your desk with them. You'll notice people moving frequently, often whole teams will move their desks to be closer to each other. There is no organizational structure keeping you from being in close proximity to the people who you'd help or helping uh, or being helped by the most. The fact that everyone is always, always moving around within the company makes people hard to find. That's why we have a link to find out where, where our people are. But basically, Valve is operating with no hierarchy. So the employees that come there, okay, they give them full autonomy to choose what they want to do. Uh, Valve, since Valve is flat, people don't join projects because they are told to. Instead, you'll decide what to work on after asking yourself the right questions. Employees can vote on projects with their feet or desk on wheels. Strong projects are the ones in which people can see demonstrated value. They staff up easily. This means that there uh, are many, any number of internet, internal recruiting efforts constantly underway. And then it, they go about and saying, but how do I decide which things to work on? There are no rules book for choosing a project or task to develop, but it's useful to answer questions like, of all the projects currently underway, What's the most valuable thing I can, what is the most valuable thing I can be working on? Which project will have the highest direct impact on our customers? How much will the work I ship benefit them? Is Valve not doing something that I, it should be doing? What's interesting, what's rewarding, what leverages my individual strengths the most? So I, I, I love this. It's very interesting and fascinating to see how a company built uh, and a very successful company was built using a flat hierarchy. And I love this manifesto and I highly recommend that you guys check it out because it also has interesting learning with regards to what we as individuals should do next in our careers. Let me just see if I want to cover anything else. Um, no. Now, that being said, we covered a lot of theory. Um, which is not really what this channel is about. Uh, this my channel. I don't want it to be about installations. I want it to be about applications, and I don't want it to be about theory. I want it to be about practice, because as Albert Einstein said, Albert Einstein said, in theory, theory and practice are the same. In practice, they are not. So let's move on to the agents builder and see how we can um, adjust the agent builder based on the learnings. Uh, from this uh, short research that I did. Uh, for doing this, I asked the uh, ChatGPT again about different types of, of manufacturing, um, but I won't cover this because it's already becoming too dense with information. Let's go back to the agent builder, which I promised you that I will cover in the last video. And the agent builder is the autogen ability to basically uh, build different agents based on, on the task at hand, on hand, and then um, selecting the relevant agents 
adopting their abilities based on the task, and then selecting only the relevant agents for the task. Now let's cover the code and the prompts. And after we cover the prompts, you will get a better understanding about how this whole thing is supposed to work, and then we will be able to adjust it. So the first step that the agent builder uh, is asking, does the following task need programming? It just need to answer yes or no. Then uh, it is giving the agent name. It give it, there is a prompt for giving the agent name. So to complete the following task, what position jobs should be set to maximize efficiency? So considering the effort, the positions in this task should be no more than max agents. More is better. We can change this to less is better. This position name should include enough information that can help a group chat manager to know when to let this position speak. The position name should be as specific as possible. For example, Python programmer. Do not use ambiguous position names, such as domain expert with no specific description of the domain. Each position should have a unique function and the position name should reflect this. The uh, position should relate to the task as significantly different in function. Add only one programming related position if the task needs so. Now, obviously, this is a prompt and we can adjust the prompt. So we can say more is better or um, or we can say use ambiguous positions because we want to be unclear and, and let the, uh, the LLM figure this out. I don't think it's a good idea, but I just want to emphasize this flexibility that we have here with this prompt. Now let's move on. This is the assigning the system message. So considering the following positional tasks, we have the task at on hand and the position. Modifying, modify the following position requirem, requirement, make it more suitable for the above tasks. So assuming that it has built, let's say, a cold email expert. Now, because we want to write cold emails to direct to consumer brands, this prompt basically tells the LLM to adjust the system message of the specific agent to be relevant to for writing direct to consumer emails. So instead of staying a cold email writer, which is a generic um, agent name is going to be called email writer direct to consumer focus, for example. So your answer should be not natural. Starting from you are now in a group chat, you need to complete a task with other participants as a as a called email expert in a direct to uh, targeting direct to consumer. Important, you should uh, you should let them reply terminate. Okay, this is irrelevant. It's technical. You should remove the related, uh, this is also technical. People with the above position can doubt previous messages or code in the group chat. For example, if there is no output after executing the code and provide a corrected answer or code. Now, this is the writing the description. And as a reminder, uh, agent description is a new feature by Autogen, which allows the group chat manager to select which would be the most relevant agent for the next next iteration. So it isn't the system message and system message is what the agent, each agent has a system message, which tells him about his specialties and his background and what he is supposed to, to do and be able to do. While on the other hand, the description is only a brief, a short sentence that describes the ability of each agent. It doesn't, um, impact the agent ability, but it does impact the group chat manager in making the decision of who should be the next agent to talk. Now, this description, uh, now what requirements we have the position and the prompt is what requirements should this position be satisfied? Uh, and then this is how the prompt that is actually building the position. Your answer should be natural. Uh, your answer should include the skills that this position should have, etc. Next uh, would be how to sort to search for um, the agent. So, what following agents should be involved in the task? 
And then you should consider if the agent name and profile match the task. So this uh, sheds light regarding how the LLM selects which agents will work in this specific task. So it, they also consider the agent name and also consider the, the profile. Considering the effort, you should select less than max agents and we can change this. Less is better or more is better, whatever. And separate uh, agent names by commas, by uh, underscores. Basically, this is building now the agents. So create a, a group chat participant agent. If the agent, never mind, this is, this is uh, irrelevant for the sake of this video, which is already pretty long. Now, my next step, I said, okay, let's go to ChatGPT and based on different, first of all, I asked it to summarize the code of that specific Python, just to give me a better understanding of what's going on. Down, 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 down. So it, it did a summary. And now I said, I have this prompt, which is a specific um, prompt that di dictates which agents should be involved. So it was agent list. You should consider if the agent name and profile match the task. Considering the effort, you should select less than X agents. Less is better. Separate agent names by commas. And then I said, the goal of the prompt is to build a team of agents. Now, I would like to consider other prompts that will build this team of agents differently. I've got different organizational structures in mind. Referring back to what we discussed before, different uh, like flat hierarchy, um, project base, etc. Can you suggest different prompts that will allow testing other structures? And then it said, certainly, let me go down. It created this, which didn't have like a unified the template. So I asked it to unify the template, the format, and then it said, okay. And basically it wrote different different prompts for different structures. So it's easier to say in Hebrew, hierarchical structure prompt. So it said, identify roles for the structure. I'm going to skip the word, assigning a lead agent and supporting agents. Include roles like manager, coordinator, specialist, establish a clear chain of command, define primary responsibility for each, each, each agent, limit to max agents with one lead, list in hierarchical order. Example, project manager, lead developer, QA specialist. So this is kind of similar to what I tried to build the other day, if you recall or have seen my, my other video. Flat structure. Select agents for a flat structure, focusing on autonomy, or autonomy and collaboration. Choose agents with broad and versatile skill, skill sets. Avoid hierarchical roles. Ensure equal collaboration. Emphasize cross-functional capabilities. Limit to max uh, agents and multi-skilled agents. In this case, we can have, let's say we're in Core AI, we can have all agents with uh, delegating abilities because this is going to be a flat structure. Matrix uh, structure prompts. Choose agents for matrix structure, balancing functional and projectile Role. So agents should handle dual roles and responsibility. Focus on collaboration and communication skills, mix on the, of functional and project based roles. So an example would be project, product development lead, IT specialist, marketing coordination. Now this is a, now a team based, form a team based structure with agents functioning as independent unit. Select cooperative and team oriented agents, avoid rigid roles, focus on team objectives, encourage diverse skills and perspective. Uh, an example would be agile team lead, user experience researcher, software engineer, etc. Network structure is not so interesting and holocratic is also not so interesting. I think the, these use cases are most relevant. Uh, hierarchical, flat, Matrix would probably be a bit more complex, but might be relevant and the team based. I think we covered everything that I wanted to cover today. It's already becoming a very long video um, and I'm not sure if it's too tedious, but my goal for the next video or the next few days would be to take this code and 
prompt the agent builder in different ways, having the same task in mind. So let's say the easiest task that we were trying to solve in the last few days was to write three different emails and giving it the same uh, prompt here and see what happens if we build um, in a flat hierarchy, flat organizational structure, what happens when we um, build in a more functional based or if we build with a very clear hierarchy because at the end of the day we want to build in a most effective and efficient manner and the way we structure this the way we structure we architect this whole automation is going to yield different results based on how we structure the based on how we form the organization so this is why i want to start messing around with different formations or and by the way it doesn't matter if i'm using autogen or crew ai uh, although crew ai is currently limited to a sequential process and um, still it doesn't matter because even if it if we have like a, a sequential sub process we can still combine it into a larger project and see what happens so the opportunities are endless and this is, I find this very fascinating because I believe that with correct planning and really thinking this through, we can build better uh, and practical business use cases. Um, but we shouldn't uh, like, you know, just dive deep into building use cases without giving this a bit of a thought and a bit of planning. I'm a firm believer or lover or... I just like the quote. I don't remember by who it was that said, if you give me uh, eight hours to chop down a tree, I will spend six hours sharpening the ax. So basically uh, how I view this uh, quote is, I think it was by Roosevelt or, yeah, I don't know, but I, I don't, no need to check this because it's not, it's kind of relevant. But the main point is if we, if you plan correctly, or like when Peter Drucker said, failing to plan is planning to fail. If we plan correctly and structure these automations correctly, I, I believe we will have better outputs and better outcomes. So in the next few days, I'm going to focus on testing out different formations. But on the other hand, I don't want to become too uh, theory driven and too and not practical enough. So I'm also going to upload a few videos about using open interpreter, which is straight to the point, automating processes and getting uh, shit done. That's it for today, guys. Let me know in the comment section, first of all, your thoughts regarding the format and the content. Did you like it? Did you find it boring? Uh, was it too long, not enough to the point, not, uh, not enough examples? Your feedback is very encouraging and it also helps me improve. At the end of the day, this is also a process of, of learning and optimizing. And based on the data, I'm going to optimize uh, the videos. This is my first request for you guys. The second request is if any of you have better ideas regarding how we can test this or implement this, I'm obviously happy to learn about this. If you can refer to other videos of people who are smarter than me, um, I'd be happy to learn more. And obviously, if you enjoyed the video, please like and leave a comment below. Subscribe. This goes without saying. And until next time, keep on automating.